welcome you all to this video today we will uh, continue our uh, routes harvest criteria and we will look some additional example and this is your article 6.4 in your book so um, the previous two sections we have introduced the routes harvest criteria now we need to demonstrate the methods the applications to a number of analysis and design problems basically why we use this thing and uh, this is very important to actually use this for design purpose so we will look this thing in this section now first of all just consider another example to start with and give us some uh, starting point that what we did last time so for that case example consider now find the number of poles in the left half plane the right half plane and on the geomag axis for the system given in figure so uh, the main idea is so we are not uh, we also want to find the stability but we find something more than that we also want to know the numbers that uh, how many poles we have on left side and uh, how many poles we have on right off side and on the geomag axis. So for that case, so we have figure here. So first step is to find the closed loop transfer function. So I told you that this is G of S and this is H of S equal to one. So just take the, uh, write the feedback, closed loop feedback. So for that case, we have T of S as a closed loop transfer function and that becomes 200 divided by S power 4 plus S power 6 S cube plus uh, 11 S square plus 6 S plus 200. So this is uh, what we get for closed loop transfer function. Now for this transfer function, this one. If we look at what is the highest power of uh, this um, denominator, so highest power is S4. So this means that you have four poles. Now, if you have four poles, the next question is how you find that this uh, system is stable or unstable. So if I look at the denominator here, so all signs are the same. So this means that I'm unable to comment on the stability. How we do that? So I need a route table to do it. So how I made a route table? So the first thing is I just put the power here. So I put s power 4, s power 3 up to s power 0 because starting is s power 4. Now I pick the mm, coefficient of s power 4 that is 1 I put here. Then 11 why because i have to choose the even power so 4 2 and 0 so i put 1 11 and 200 from this denominator similarly for second row i i put 6 and again 6 okay and 0 so i, I just divide throughout by 6 so it becomes 1 1 now it makes my life easier so that my numbers become smaller so it's easy to apply the formula so that I can calculate the next row if you remember from previous video that first two rows are actually calculated using the denominator of the transfer function so after that I didn't put zero here you can put zero here okay. we didn't put it but no harm to put zero here okay. now uh, I have to write this next row how I find it so if you remember I need to put minus sign then determinant so first column of determinant is 1 1 second column is 11 1 divided by this one so when I solve 1 minus 11 so it becomes 10 divided by 1 so with minus sign it becomes so minus minus cancel out so we have 10 here. Okay. Now we have to move to next value. So 10, I put 10 here. Then I have to 
find this to uh, second value for second value again i put 1 1 and then i put 200 and 0 when i solve it it becomes minus 200 divided by 1 so i put uh, minus minus become plus so it becomes 200 okay now again i divide it by 10 it becomes 1 and 20 so why i do that i can do it and this make my life easier okay. now after that i have to move to next row for for next row i have to use these two rows for calculation that is 1 1 1 20 0 0 so again to calculate i first column is again 1 1 second is 120 divided by 1 so when i solve it it becomes 1 so it becomes 20 minus 1 that become 19 with minus sign it becomes minus 19 again i solve the next one because these are zeros it becomes zero again the next Now again, I move further. So for next uh, row, what I have to do is that I use these two. So it becomes 1 minus 19. Second is 20, 0. When I solve it, it becomes a 0. Minus minus becomes plus. So it becomes um, 20. Okay. Because we have to divide by, it becomes a uh, minus 19 into 20 divided by minus 19 so minus 19 cancel out we come up with 20 so this is the way we can make the routes table so if you are struggling to make it you can go to the previous video where we did all this now question is uh, he is asking us first of all we have to look at the stability of the system so look here we have plus to plus sign then plus to plus sign in first column, all right? Then plus to minus sign and minus to plus. So how many changes we have? Plus to minus and minus to plus, there are two changes. So this means that we have two right off plan poles here, okay? When we have two right off plan poles, how many poles we have? We have four, so there's no zero row here. So this means that we have two right off plan poles and two left off plan poles. So there are four poles. There is no pole on J omega axis. Why we say there is no pole on J omega axis? J omega axis poles only occurs when we have a whole row is represented by zero. Okay. So now if we uh, look at the second example. And in second example, we have uh, again a transfer function is given to us in terms of block diagram here. When we solve this block diagram, so question is the same to calculate the number of poles. Now the first thing in previous example we see that uh, if there is no zero in the first column or uh, if there is no whole row is zero, so this means that there is no pole on the remember this. Now, the next example where we have this transfer function. Now, look here, the power is 5. Now, this means that we have to put S5 to S0. Now, we just plug in the values 2, then 2, then 2. So, throughout 2 is the first row. For second, we have 3, 3 and 1. Look here, 3, 3, 1. All right. Now, when we um, solve this for next row, look at 2, 3, 2, 3. When we take the determinant, it becomes 0 divided by 3. So it becomes 0. Again, when we 2, 3 and 2, 1, it becomes 4 by 3 because we have first column of the determinant as 2, 3. The second is 2, 1. When we solve it, it becomes um, 4. Uh, so uh, minus 1 become plus divided by 3 it become 4 by 3 and 0 is here okay we don't mention it now look here the first uh, element of this row becomes 0 so if you remember if you can't proceed further so what we have to do we have to remove the 0 and replace by a small positive number say epsilon so when we put epsilon then now we can move further so we have 3 epsilon 3 and 4 by 3, 1 and 0, 
for these two rows we can use to find the next row when we uh, apply the formula it becomes 3 epsilon minus 4 divided by epsilon then 1 then again we can find the next formula and so on okay. so we complete the table now after completing the table now question is what about the stability here so how we find the stability we have to look for the first column here so for first column what is the sign of the first element here in the column is positive second is also positive we assume a positive small number so it is positive again but here it is not positive it becomes negative so what about here again it becomes positive again positive so look here we have positive 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 negative positive positive so there are two sign changes from negative to positive and positive so so from the routes table using the denominator a zero appears in the first column of sq look here since the entire row is not zero simply replace the zero with a small quantity and continue to permitting epsilon to be a small positive quantity find the first term of s square row in negative thus there is a two sign changes and the system is unstable so we know that sign changes so how many sign changes two sign changes so this means that you have two poles in the right of plane the remaining poles are at the left of plane how many poles we have we have five poles so this means that if you have a single zero in the first element of the row in that case you don't have any pole on the j omega axis again remember this so you have either poles on the left of side or on the right of plane of the s plane so the main idea here is because there are two uh, sign changes so you have two right of plane poles and remaining how many remaining 5 minus 2 is 3, so 3 on the left of plane. So, this is the way you can find out the number of poles. Now, last example, we will uh, look at when we have whole row is 0. For that case, we have this uh, figure, okay, where we have G of S and H of S given to us. When we take the closed loop transfer function, so this becomes a closed loop transfer function. Look here, this is S power 8, 7, and so on. So this is, uh, we are unable to identify the stability. So we use the routes table. When we start the routes table, uh, we have to find the first two rows using this uh, denominator. So this is the even power, even power, we have to start with even power so for s8 the coefficient is 1 we put 1 here then coefficient for s6 10 then s4 48 then s2 128 then s0 128 now the next one 3 then we have to put 24 then we have to put 96 then we have to put 192 and 0 okay now we divide it throughout 3 so make the number smaller so that calculation easier so it becomes 1 1 10 8 and so on now from here for first two rows we have to calculate the next number so for that case we have to take minus determinant of 1 1 10 8 divided by 1 so when we solve it it becomes 2 again we will move to next one so for that case uh, we will continue with 1 1 48 32 it becomes uh, 16 then 64 when we divide it by 2 it becomes 1 8 32 64 now after that we have to use the s7 s6 row to calculate for s5 when we do that it becomes uh, actually 0 because 1 1 8 8 when we take the determinant 8 minus 8 is 0 so it becomes 0 now then 1 1 32 again 0 1 1 64 64 again 0 so whole row is 0 so what is the remedy for whole row is 0 so what is the remedy we have to move the above row and write the polynomial for s 6 so we wrote here this is also known as auxiliary polynomial so p of s is becomes uh, we have to write for s 6 is becomes 
एस सिक्स प्लस एट एस फोर प्लस थर्टी टू एस केयर प्लस सिक्सटी फोर सो दिस इज द पॉलिनम नाउ वी हैव टू टेक द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ दिस पॉलिनम सो दैट वी कैन राइट फॉर एस फाइव बिकॉज दिस इज एस सिक्स सो वेन वी टेक द डेरीवेटिव इट बिकम सिक्स एस फाइव सो आई पुट सिक्स हेयर देन इट बिकम्स थर्टी टू एस क्यू दैन इट बिकम्स सिक्सटी फोर एस ओके सो this is the way we wrote this um, uh, sorry uh, this row becomes 6 32 64 0 okay so uh, we know that we just divide with 6 it becomes 3 16 32 0 okay so after that we use this and we continue table so that we complete the whole table now look here we have one row equal to so this means that when you have four row zero so this uh, is a very evidence that you have some pose on the j omega axis so j omega axis pose come only when you have whole row is zero in the rough table now look at the sign here plus 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 to minus minus to plus so this is evident that your system is unstable first thing now the next thing is how many changes you have two sign change so this means that you have two right of plan pose so when you minus from two it becomes uh, six the remaining pose becomes six now how many j omega axis so for j omega axis you have to look for auxiliary equation here uh, polynomial so you have to look at the what you say power of this exactly so it 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 is six so this means that you have three pairs on the j omega axis so look here so uh, we just take the derivative and can, we know that there are two sign changes from the even polynomial at s6 rows down to the end of the table hence the even polynomial has two right of So it's very obvious. So I just plug it that we have two right of plane. Because of the symmetrical about the origin, the even polynomial must have an equal number of left of plane poles. Okay. Now because uh, this is an even uh, polynomial, we have two right of. So to make the symmetry, we have two uh, left of poles as well. now how many remaining poles we have two j omega axis poles okay so from auxiliary we know that we when we take the roots so we come up with two j omega poles so uh, this will give us how many poles at the j omega axis this equation sorry not this one this one p of s when we plug is equal to zero so Uh, this is the way we can use rouse table to find the number of poles now the next we will use this for design purpose how we use it so this is a transfer function where we have to design a controller k so it is g of s so when we write the closed loop we come up with s cube plus 18 s square plus 17 s plus k no to make the table is very easy we start from s cube it become 117 18 18 and then we come up with next so for first row to be stable uh, the sign must be same so look here we have positive positive we need positive for s one rows element and last row so for this means that k must be greater than 0 similarly this means that 13 k 86 minus k divided by 18 must be greater than when we solve this we come up with values of k and for stability k must be greater than 1386 okay so this means that uh, uh, this system is stable when k values is more than 1386 so 1386 is the boundary value of k that differentiate for stable and unstable system so for stable system k must be greater than 1386 
for marginally stable k must be equal to 13 attitude when i plug in uh, equal to k 13 6 look at this becomes zero if this is become zero so whole row is zero how you uh, remedy for this thing if you look at the previous example you take the above row and write the polynomial so i wrote polynomial here 18 s square plus 13 86 because i plug the value of k to that. so this is known as auxiliary polynomial so when i take the derivative so it becomes 16 s and 0 i can continue so from here, uh, when I put this thing, uh, when I solve this uh, auxiliary equation, solve that I can find the uh, pole on the geomag axis. When I solve it, so S becomes This gives me the geomag axis S and that S the uh, square is equal to minus 1386 divided by 18. So uh, for uh, um, calculating S, uh, I have to, uh, I become the geomega under root 1386 divided by 18 under root. So uh, this 1386 under root uh, divided by 18 under root is actually the frequency of oscillation. So, uh, this can can be used for designing purpose. So there's another example. So and this one you can solve it by yourself and uh, you can find the values of k for stability and also for geomagnetic. Now last topic where we have stability in state space. So if you remember for state space, um, if I um, look at the transfer function transfer function are denominator so denominator polynomial is equal to determinant of si minus a equal to zero so take the determinant and you get the closed loop um, look here you get the closed loop uh, polynomial for zeros and that becomes determinant of lambda phi minus a equal to zero so when you solve this uh, you have the uh, with s you have the actually the polynomial that is denominator of closed loop transfer function so look here i just go through it very quickly so this is your state space form so you, what you have to do you have to take the determinant of si minus a so that you can find the closed loop transfer function closed loop uh, poles of the system so for characteristic equation i just take the determinant of this it becomes x cube minus x s. So for that characteristic polynomial, you have to develop the table and you can find the stability of this state space. So when I develop the table, so I can use the routes criteria. Look here, it is plus minus 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 minus. So there's only one sign change. So this is a unstable system. So with this. Um, you can do this uh, example by yourself so that you understand the concept so um, so route table can be used for stability analysis also used for uh, controller design so this is the first design idea where you can uh, use this to design it so for example this is an example where you can find the values of k and when uh, this is the value that uh, if k is greater than this and less than 2633 so when i plug in on the on this value where there is a uh, margin step so do this example and develop understanding thank you i will stop here